can you see my screen in the full moon? Yes, you're good. Okay, thank you. So good afternoon once again. I'm Kostadinov Kotsalos. Uh, I'm a member of the RD team of uh, European Dynamics. So welcome again on the third uh, third webinar on uh, uh, open codes of interface. So essentially, as Maria said, this uh, uh, last webinar uh, will provide an overview of all the uh, available business use cases, but by providing a brief uh, presentation of them. And basically, uh, the main purpose of this uh, webinar is to focus on addressing any uh, questions that will be um, posed on uh, the Q&A so that we are assured that all these are uh, results. So I will give you a very, very short uh, overview of the interface project. So uh, interface uh, uh, project stands for DSO, DSO uh, consumer interface architecture to provide innovative uh, grid services for an efficient power system architecture. This project uh, uh, started in 2019. Uh, it is actually comprised of a very large consortium of 42 uh, partners. Uh, so multiple uh, TSOs, uh, DSOs, uh, energy suppliers, aggregators, regulators, uh, market operators, uh, service uh, and technology providers, uh, along with um, research partners and institutions. So the main strategic objective of uh, interface project is to design a, a common architecture capable to uh, connect actors and markets in a transparent and uh, non-discriminatory manner. So this essentially um, uh, is done in order to drive the collaboration for the procurement of grid services in, a, in an efficient and optimized way by bringing uh, together the transmission system operators and the distribution system operators. So essentially, an uh, interface project aims on designing a uh, a platform, a data exchange platform, interoperable data exchange platform, which will uh, provide, uh, which will assure that the optimized procurement of those uh, grid services by um, promoting state-of-the-art digital uh, technologies. So essentially this uh, interoperable uh, platform uh, is what we call a AEXA uh, platform, which stands for the interoperable pan-European grid services architecture. It is a, a common architecture that enables the connection and data infor and information exchange of multiple actors, uh, such as uh, market operators, flexibility service providers, uh, balance responsible parties, um, as well as the system operators. In order to optimize uh, the operation of the grids, most particularly by focusing on the procurement uh, of uh, grid services in an optimized manner. Um, and this uh, EXA platform is um, a modular uh, architecture, which is comprised of uh, four main blocks, um, the flexibility uh, register, the DSO-DSO coordination platform, um, uh, the DSO, uh, coordination, DSO, DSO coordination, coordination platform, uh, the single interface to market, as well as the settlement unit for the energy settlement. So essentially here we can see um, the EX architecture uh, broke down in uh, multiple interoperable layers. In the business layer, we can see the multiple actors that they are interconnected, such as the flexibility service provider, uh, consumers and prosumers, the market operator, and the uh, transmission system operator and the distribution system operator, which uh, do connect in this platform in order to uh, accommodate uh, grid qualification processes, the product qualification, procurement of uh, grid services, activation of, um, uh, of any income bids that uh, the system operators feel that they, uh, uh, they, they're willing to uh, activate uh, a bid, and the settlement processes. And it is important to state that uh, this is a, a this EX architecture is a modular architecture which is comprised of these four blocks, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in the information layer, uh, this platform is uh, designed in, a, uh, in order to uh, accommodate also a common information uh, model messages, uh, 
which are standardized by uh, IEC. Also, in the communication communication layer, it's important to state that uh, it is also compliant with uh, the the Echo SP uh, platform by Ensoin. Um, so very briefly, the core processes of the EXA platform, again, are uh, grid qualification, the product pre-qualification, the trading and bid qualification uh, processes, the activation of uh, the bids, and the settlement. As well as, there are multiple uh, uh, additional functionalities uh, uh, which, are, uh, within, with, which reside within the, uh, within the main blocks of uh, EXA. Uh, but uh, uh, I will not go uh, in details on that. You may also uh, see the pre-recorded uh, previous uh, sessions. Um, so some details about uh, the interface demo areas. Uh, they are comprised of uh, three uh, main pillars, uh, where in total we have uh, seven demos. So uh, these uh, three uh, main pillars are the uh, congestion management and balancing issues, the pan-European clearing market, and the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, trading. Uh, so uh, the first one is uh, for the mitigation of uh, congestion, uh, congestions and uh, to activate uh, local flexibility resources for system balancing uh, services through the EXA platform. Uh, within the second pillar, it is to, for the promotion of the integration of distributed energy resources into the electricity markets uh, by demonstrating also mechanisms that lead to the establishment of a seamless pan-European market. And the peer-to-peer -peer trading pillar, which aims to test state-of-the-art uh, digital technologies, such as uh, blockchain for peer-to-peer -peer energy transactions that promote local uh, markets and uh, smart asset management. And very briefly, in the first demo, we have these um, uh, three uh, demos. The first one for the DSO and Consumer Alliance. The second one for uh, an intelligent distribution node to test the grid services management system for flexibility, low voltage, medium voltage networks, varia. And then we have the single flexibility market uh, for the ex with an exchange platform for distributed uh, flexibilities in end-to-end -end, uh, electricity networks, which brings together uh, three uh, regional parties, uh, Finland, Estonia, and Latvia. In the second pillar, we have these two demos. The first one, uh, the asset enabling local markets, uh, which brings to together uh, Hungary and uh, Slovenia. And then the blockchain-based DSO-DSO uh, flexibility case, which is destined in Bulgaria and uh, Romania. In the third pillar, um, we have two demos, uh, the one that is for uh, distributed resources into wholesale markets, which um, uh, proposes a market algorithm for Romania, uh, Bulgaria, and Greece in an integrated manner. And last, the special aggregation of uh, local flexibility with an euphemia based uh, market platform algorithm that is tested in Romania. So that's it uh, all from my side. It was a, a brief uh, overview of interface project. Uh, I guess I give the floor to uh, Maria now. Yes, thank you. Okay. So uh, this is Maria uh, Papadimitriou speaking. I'm a project manager of Syntec Solutions. Uh, Syntec is responsible for the uh, preparation and implementation of the open call. So interface open call looks for innovators. Uh, the interface consortium is looking for new services for its power system flexibility platform. Uh, the successful application can receive uh, a 60,000 euros funding maximum. And the innovative ideas that are set out are across six topics, the six business use cases. That includes data provision, conjecture management in power systems and flexibility services. There is one month uh, left. The call uh, will be open until 30th of June. And the deadline is at five uh, o'clock. 
what's the aim of this goal is uh, uh, to develop uh, and extend deeper infrastructures and state-of-the-art technologies of interface architecture and data management services to be implemented and validated by an interfaces pilots. The interface project aims at allowing a seamless and coordinated operation of all stakeholders to use and procure common services. So uh, the proposals uh, are asked to be oriented through this direction to promote and enable flexibility of end users and uh, to increase flexibility awareness and flexibility needs along the grids by attracting more flexibility players into the marketplaces. Uh, some uh, uh, key uh, issues on the submissions and on the uh, funding. Uh, the funding scheme follows uh, the EU funding scheme. This means 70% funding for for-profit organizations and 100% for non-profit organizations. Uh, there will delivered a 25% of free financing to beneficiaries and the further payments will be delivered after successful completion of milestones and deliverables agreed. Eligible for funding are any legal entity possessing a validated big number. This means by public or private bodies, research organization, non-profit organization, SMEs and startups and uh, international organization of EU interest established in an EU member state or an associate country. However, uh, if uh, uh, applicants do not have uh, uh, yet a validated big number, they can submit their proposal with the provisional one. Uh, some submission rules. Uh, the English language is the only official language. Uh, please be sure that no part is written in any other language. One submission per applicant will be accepted. This means that if one, more than one is identified, we will evaluate the, the first one submitted. The deadline is strict and uh, uh, so please do not wait uh, for a last minute proposal submission in order to avoid any failures. Uh, the submission will be only through the portal uh, via the submission tool, otherwise it will not be accepted. And uh, one further uh, key point is uh, uh, that uh, applicants will be sure that they do not have actual or potential conflict of interest with the interface of the whole processes. Uh, all you may need is uh, uploaded on the open call portal. This is the URL. Uh, here you can find all the documentations, uh, the descriptions of the business use cases that are that is also available on the guide of applicants. And there is a frequently asked questions sub page on the resources menu uh, that is updated on current uh, basis uh, according to the questions received on the help desk. We advise you that you register beforehand in order to receive news and updates. And of course, the help desk is uh, always active for any questions that. Uh, may arise. Important dates on the call, uh, as we said, it's the submission deadline. Uh, by the 10th of September, the results will be announced. Uh, the results will be communicated to applicants by mail, but they will, they are also be announced on the open call portal and on interface website. Uh, applicants uh, will have uh, 10 business days uh, to submit their objections and they should uh, be delivered by email. We have a few uh, guidelines on the guide for applicants, so uh, please advise. And the contracting period with beneficiaries shall end on late October. This means that beneficiaries will have uh, we can start, I'm sorry, uh, the implementation by September 2021 and the maximum uh, 
implementation period is six months. During this uh, period, a support team from each business use case will be uh, will mentor the beneficiaries. The results extracted for the implementation will be analyzed and clustered to identify synergies and evaluation will be conducted on the overall impact of the open call projects on interface and an energy ecosystem. By engaging the external third parties, interface aims through this call to implement its objectives and to deliver added value to the energy system. Further uh, information uh, are available on the official doc uh, of the Guide of Publicans, and you can also advise our previous webinars. The videos are uploaded on the news page of the Open Call Portal. So uh, this is uh, uh, it from my side. I would like to thank you. I see that we have some uh, questions. You can uh, write your questions on the Q&A uh, tool that is available. Maria, thank you for the presentation. I Actually, I would like to ask all the attendees to, to pose their questions, if possible, in the Q&A, not in the chat box, so, so that we can follow them uh, more properly. Uh, there is already okay. some context in the in the chat box, Maria, if you want to start from there. And okay. then please. That's okay, yes. Okay. So please pose your questions in the Q&A uh, instead of the uh, chat box. Uh, okay, uh, Vladimir asks uh, uh, that there was a problem delivery, delivering uh, his message to uh, the help desk. Uh, okay, uh, uh, please try again. This is, uh, you send uh, the message uh, through the contact tool of the, of the portal through the, the, the official form. Otherwise, you can uh, address uh, the, the email to, 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 to mine. You can send your question to my email. Uh, we need to mention here that, uh, <clears throat> uh, that uh, we are receiving questions in this uh, address, email address that we have uh, provided, this interface open call at interface.eu. So we are receiving uh, questions from other people. Yes, I received so one today. We need to check uh, why uh, perhaps it is uh, uh, specifically for Vladimir this issue. In any case, as Maria said, please also use the personal email address of Maria if necessary. And indeed, just to compliment that we uh, personally, me and Maria, we, we uh, eventually we we check the status of this email, so of the proper operation of that. So uh, even today we received one email. So. Okay, I think that the contact uh, for uh, will be easier, but in any case, you can send it to both emails. So uh, selected third parties will sign a standard model contact funding agreement, which includes OK conditions of uh, transfer, IPR rules, and other collaboration mechanisms. Where can we see a draft of this agreement? In particular, in the IPR rules send normally email in April and just now same results. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't know what the issue with the email, but yes, uh, send it to me. Uh, George, do you want to answer uh, when the draft will be uh, uploaded? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, uh, the RPR rules and the model uh, of the contract uh, agreement, uh, so we are preparing uh, uh, the model for the contract and uh, will be uploaded uh, uh, 
in the same uh, portal uh, where the rest of the information is uh, available for potential applicants. Uh, of course, uh, the API rules also are uh, relevant with uh, what is being offered from all different sites. So we can provide some uh, a general view. However, this will be you know defined in detail once we have a, a successful application. Once we we understand better what this application brings to the project and also what is necessary from the project side uh, to be released and to be offered to to this application. Of course, uh, as part of uh, of and within let's say the boundaries of the project. Okay, thank you. Uh, Emilio uh, seems to have, have a problem with the, with the help desk email. I will check it again uh, by the end of uh, this meeting. So I will come back to you. Yes, Vladimir, uh, more or less, this is uh, the way. I mean, it's not exactly a negotiation phase. Uh, I mean, that uh, as I said, uh, uh, the project uh, and the consortium members of the project already have uh, uh, a consortium agreement. And uh, this consortium agreement, of course, is uh, private for the consortium members uh, and has specific provisions. However, yes, uh, once we, we better understand what the project will give to your application and once we better understand what your application will give to the project, we can, of, of course, have uh, a better, let's say, uh, and more uh, detailed agreement on, on the IPR. Okay, so let's go back and to the answer. There, there is one more question. Yes, on the QA, QA, yes. Can large energy companies also apply? As long as it's not a, a consortium, there is no. Uh, there is no issue of not eligibility. Yes, I think this is uh, covered uh, specifically by the eligibility criteria we have set. So indeed, large companies can apply as long as they, as Maria mentioned, they are not part of consortium, but they apply on their own. And also, of course, given that they are part of uh, EU, EU and associated countries, so there are a certain, let's say, a clear uh, definition of eligible uh, applicants in the portal. Okay, so please address uh, the rest of your questions to the Q&A, so not to uh, miss any uh, question. And we can uh, proceed with uh, business use case number one, and Ali Fari uh, from NCA. Ali, the floor is yours. Thank you, Maria. I will share my screen now. Okay. Thank you for the nice, intro uh, nice introduction, Konstantinos, Maria, and George. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ali Fahri. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer specialized in uh, power system engineering, and I work at NSOE as a data publication lead, uh, working on the transparency related activities. And today, um, I will present you two business use cases uh, related to the uh, improvement of transparency uh, in the flexibility markets. And the first uh, one will be about the utilization of the 
uh, existing transparency platform data based on the needs uh, for flexibility markets. Uh, here you can uh, see the outline of my presentation. Uh, I will uh, start with why we focused on the transparency in flexibility markets. Uh, then we'll provide you an overview of the NSOE's transparency platform. And after that, uh, I will mention about the details uh, of this uh, business use case. And next will be the, uh, some uh, information on the uh, possible data download options on the transparency platform. And finally, uh, I will talk about uh, some possible data sets uh, to improve the transparency for flexibility markets. And then the, at the end of this uh, session, we will have a Q&A session for your questions. Uh, to start with, uh, I'd like to mention about the importance of transparency and why we focused on it. And uh, first of all, uh, we would uh, like to give you the uh, indicators that why we focused on the transparency platform and why it is so uh, important uh, for us. And uh, transparency platform uh, and the transparency information is very crucial for uh, market efficiency and liquidity. And it uh, also uh, plays an important role to uh, attract more service providers and uh, more providers means uh, more investments and uh, higher competition and uh, resulting in a well uh, functioning market in the end. A uh, second important point is uh, giving a chance uh, to market players uh, to better value uh, their products. This can be uh, only achieved by revealing the transparent uh, information of the traded services and products in the market. And additionally, uh, information on the provided services uh, together with price and location information uh, will definitely provide some investment signals to market participants and uh, will attract more players in the market. And the more players uh, will provide higher available capacities. And this uh, also has a, a positive effect from the perspective of uh, reliability and security of supply. And um, uh, moreover, uh, Development of uh, flexibility markets uh, will also help to the grid operators uh, to manage congestions more efficiently in the system. And this will bring the opportunity to eliminate some of the uh, grid investments and uh, will result in a lot of savings. And the last thing uh, I want to mention is uh, the elimination of uh, information asymmetry by providing the uh, same level of information to all market participants. And uh, this will definitely abuse uh, the risk of market uh, abuse in the uh, flexibility markets and uh, will further encourage the development in the market. Uh, next, I will uh, briefly mention about the background of the transparency platform. As uh, some of you may know, uh, transparency platform is uh, grounded on an EU regulation from June 2013. And this regulation defines the responsible parties to provide and publish information on the transparency platform. And uh, being in line with this regulation, uh, and so we uh, developed a set of documents, and this is called the Manual of, of Procedures. And this set of documentation provides uh, very detailed information about the transparency platform's content and uh, its uh, operational issues, uh, operational uh, functionalities. And for example, the detailed data descriptions documents, which I think will be very beneficial for you, provide information about the available data items on the transparency platform. And it defines uh, what each data item represents and also provides information if there is any specific calculation methodology is in place or not. And additionally, it provides information regarding the deadlines of data uh, to be submitted to the transparency platform. So this, uh, we can summarize that this gives the all detailed information about the available data on the transparency platform. Since this business use case is addressing uh, the uh, possibilities, opportunities to use the existing data. This can be a very useful guidance uh, for you. Please uh, keep in mind that information. 
and for the business requirements specification document uh, this is more uh, related to platforms uh, functionalities basically provides information on how data is processed what kind of configurations are required and how data should be uh, visualized and displayed on the uh, on the platform and so on and uh, last thing to mention here is this uh, implementation guides uh, basically uh, they define the way of data exchange and uh, additionally the all required attributes and parameters uh, present in the exchange process so it will give you the information about the uh, exchange data between the participants and the uh, transparency platform moving next uh, i will talk about the uh, uh, content of the transparency platform uh, and we'll provide you an overview there uh, there are seven different domains on the transparency platform and under these seven different uh, domains uh, there are 134 data items available at the moment and i want to briefly touch to the most uh, popular ones uh, quickly uh, under the load domain, you can find information about the uh, actual load and some forecast, uh, forecasted information uh, made based on day ahead, week ahead, and month ahead basis. Under generation domain, you can find information about the installed capacities, actual generation outputs of the uh, units, and also the generation per uh, resource type like coal, hydropower, solar, etc. And for uh, transmission domain, uh, transparency platform provides information about the cross-border flows, uh, scheduled flows between the bidding zone and also uh, offered and allocated capacities on the lines together uh, with some information also for the forecasted capacities. The next one is the outages domain. Uh, it is one of the most popular uh, among uh, the users of the platform. Uh, there you can find information about the planned and forced outages uh, on the system uh, for transmission grids, uh, assets, uh, for transmission lines, power plants, uh, and also for big consumption units. Next is the balancing uh, domain. I believe this is one of the uh, most useful one for this uh, business use case because you can find information about the bids, including both price and volume information for the transmission level. And uh, additionally, you can also reach the information for procured capacities and how much of them are activated and uh, what's the average price for this activation and so on. And moreover, uh, you can also find information about the imbalance status of the grid, uh, whether it's a surplus or deficit, or what's the volume and price and so on. And uh, under system operation domain, there are uh, data items related to the, with the frequency quality. And finally, for congestion management, uh, you can find information uh, for the activities, uh, to relieve the congestions uh, assets by the TSOs. Uh, it also provides uh, information about the cost associated uh, to these activities. And the aim of this business use case is to make use of the existing data published on the transparency platform for flexibility markets. Therefore, uh, participants are expected uh, to identify the useful information on the platform and if necessary, combine and transform this data uh, for the needs uh, and uh, prepare it uh, in a convenient way for the needs uh, of flexibility markets. And uh, by doing so, uh, it is aimed to provide a common ground uh, for all participants who are interested uh, in the markets and uh, they can get more useful information uh, about the flexibility markets. So this business use case uh, will encourage uh, prototypes and applications to collect the existing data on the transparency platform and convert it to a more convenient and understandable and useful form for flexibility markets. And uh, it is for sure that this business use case will also help uh, us to understand the real requirements of the flexibility markets in terms of the transparency aspects. 
And as a result of this, uh, we expect to see some suggestions for candidate data sets to be published uh, for the uh, future in the transparency platform. And uh, because these data sets uh, can be considered as recommendations uh, for regulators, and it can uh, also help uh, them to shape the legal background uh, for this transparency requirement. And in the overall process, uh, we will provide you assistance and guidance uh, regarding the available data on the platform and support you about the data exchange options and uh, for the transparency platform and how to reach to existing data in a more efficient way. And as an output, uh, we expect and new tools and applications to provide publicly available information for anyone who is interested in flexibility markets. I will just briefly mention about uh, the data download options. You can find the details uh, on the previous uh, webinar call in order to save some time. Uh, we provide five different means of data download options. These are web GUI, SFTP, RESTful API, subscription, and data repository. Uh, for this business use case uh, purposes, I think most convenient one will, will be the REST API, SFTP, and subscriptions. You can find the details uh, in the respective guides. Uh, and you, if you have any questions uh, regarding these uh, communication channels, please uh, address them in QA. And finally, in my final slide, I would like to show some. Uh, possible candidate data sets uh, to improve the transparency for flexibility markets. Uh, in addition to utilizing the existing data, uh, making research on the needs uh, of the flexibility markets is also uh, one of the most important output of this business use case uh, because uh, the flexibility markets are in their early, early phases uh, and the transparency aspects are not clearly defined yet. And here in this table, you can see some candidate uh, data items. Uh, this includes data for distributed energy sources, like including capacities and the voltage level that the source is connected from, and also the technology uh, used. And demand responsiveness uh, assets and information on distributed flexibilities and demand bits in balancing. Uh, these are also very important candidates, and these candidates can both reveal information uh, about uh, available capacities and information about the uh, submitted bids, including the activated volumes and uh, price information. Another useful candidate uh, can be information for uh, residential photovoltaic production and curtailments of renewable production, and this will all uh, give information to uh, better understand the mechanism uh, in the flexibility markets. So the, I believe that all are very strong candidates and uh, to further improve the transparency in the flexibility markets, uh, we need these ones, maybe the, the other uh, candidates that will uh, be suggested from you. So from each participants applying to these business use cases, we also uh, expect an outcome uh, related uh, to the possible uh, candidate asset sets that can be uh, useful for uh, future uh, to be published in the transparency platform. And thank you for your uh, attention. I would like to check uh, if we have any questions in the Q&A session now. So I'm checking are the examiners compliant with ICE or the XML. I will come to uh, this uh, point in the next uh, slide while giving information uh, about the CIM. And it should be uh, the XML option should be compliant with this uh, IEC requirements. Because this common information model is based on the IEC, uh, IEC requirements. So this is uh, one of the uh, 
uh, references that we are uh, referring to. So yes. Is there any open questions? No. So I will continue with this second business use case if there will be no other questions. So if you want to ask uh, also a question regarding the first business use case, you can uh, raise it after I complete my presentation for the second business use case. Okay, now I will continue with the second business use case, which is the development of an application that will serve as a data provider for IXL. Uh, within this presentation, I will start with giving you some detailed information about the data providers and their responsibilities. And uh, following that, I will provide details about uh, this business use case. And next uh, will be details for CIM and uh, ECHO SP. Uh, and uh, because these two forms the base of the information and communication layers uh, of market data exchanges. And finally, I will once again uh, touch the topic for possible uh, data sets uh, to improve the transparency in flexibility markets, uh, because this is uh, the common point between uh, two business use cases uh, related to the transparency platform in this open call. Uh, let me start with explaining uh, who are the data providers. Uh, data providers uh, are the source of uh, published information on the transparency platform. And uh, being in line with, again, the transparency regulation, uh, data is uh, retrieved from the primary owners of the data. For example, this can be a, a generation output of a power plant and uh, TSOs process and deliver this data uh, to the transparency platform. And it's also possible for uh, TSOs uh, to delegate these responsibilities to some third parties uh, based on the prior agreements and compatibility checks uh, to make sure that the third party is uh, capable uh, to the it, uh, both from technical and operational point of view. And uh, one thing, thing uh, to remember uh, from this slide is that the performance of data providers are very important as the data uh, availability on the platform is uh, dependent on the uh, data submitted uh, by the data providers. And uh, each data item available on the platform has a link to uh, some uh, regularity uh, backgrounds. And uh, depending on the nature of the data, uh, there are some deadlines uh, to be made uh, to be met by the data providers and regulatory authorities also closely monitor uh, the quality and the availability of the data on the platform and in case of some violations of the requirements uh, there might be some financial consequences uh, for the TSOs and if it's delegated to the third parties uh, indirectly to the third parties as well. And on the transparency platform, uh, in addition to uh, transmission system operators, we also have uh, other data providers with different uh, profiles. And uh, for example, exchange offices like EAX, North Pole, and coordination offices like JAO uh, and balancing platforms, for example, Terra uh, provides uh, information about the replacement reserve market. And similar to Terra, uh, Mari and Picasso platforms will provide uh, balancing data information for uh, AFRR and MFRR type of reserves to the tra transparency platform. And uh, like I said, uh, third parties, uh, IT companies uh, are also uh, act as a data provider for transparency platform. Uh, moving next, uh, I will now provide some details about the aim of this uh, business use case. Uh, as I've just mentioned in the previous uh, slide, uh, data providers receives data from uh, primary owners of the data and ex act as a, a source uh, to feed the data to transparency platform. Currently, uh, in the transparency platform, we have around 50 data providers uh, compared to the thousands of primary data owners, let's say. 
And uh, for the platform, uh, it's not feasible to retrieve data uh, directly from that many uh, resources individually uh, from the operational point of view. Uh, because for each data provider, uh, it requires many steps uh, of configuration uh, and some tests to make sure that everything is in good shape before uh, finally giving the green light for the data provider to publish data on the platform. Technically, it's possible uh, for the platform to support uh, many data providers, but uh, operationally, it's not feasible and uh, efficient for us. Uh, therefore, uh, it's more likely that uh, a similar approach will be followed for the uh, flexibility market data. And uh, in that case, uh, IXA appears to be the one of the strongest candidates to act as a uh, data provider for flexibility markets. And in order to uh, achieve this goal, uh, this business use case aims uh, the development of a new tool and uh, some services uh, to enable uh, IEXA to act as a data provider uh, for transparency platform. And uh, being in line with that, uh, the participants are uh, expected to develop and build uh, some prototypes that can act as a bridge between IEXA and transparency platform. And this, uh, you can think of this as a, like an extension to IEXA, uh, to enable it uh, to uh, provide uh, data to the transparency platform. And uh, since the regulatory guidelines uh, are not yet uh, clear for flexibility markets, uh, the proposed tool uh, must be flexible to adapt to the future requirements that the regulation uh, will bring. And another important point uh, to pay attention is uh, all proposed solutions uh, should be compatible with a uh, common information model, CIM. And uh, because CIM basically brings the uh, standard models to data exchange, the standardization to data exchange among the uh, market players. And it, in addition to the uh, data exchange standards, uh, data submission channels must be compatible uh, with the ones that Transparency Platform uh, offers. And I will briefly uh, mention uh, about them in the coming slides. Uh, finally, uh, a common point with the first business use case, participants are also encouraged to address the transparency needs of flexibility markets to provide recommendation for the regularity developments. Now, uh, I will provide some details about the CIM standards. And these standards are built on the IAC standards listed in here and play a very important role for an efficient uh, data exchange. Uh, you can imagine uh, the increasing number of players in the grid, uh, like with the integration of electrical vehicles, more renewables, battery storage systems, and so on. And this all brings new challenges uh, to the system operators. And therefore, uh, it requires a very effective and timely communication uh, among the different players of the uh, grid. And if you don't uh, have such a standards, it would uh, have been too complicated and uh, would require too many reworks. And uh, that would result in spending many resources for no good reason in the end. And that's why uh, the use of CIM uh, in the proposed uh, pilots and prototypes are uh, very important for us. And basically the CIM uh, offers some profiles for different needs uh, of data exchange. Uh, for example, we cannot exchange the grid topology data uh, and the market data using the same pro profile. And the same holds uh, for the flexibility market data. And uh, following this uh, profile development, uh, we provide also the UML-based uh, implementation guides uh, for better representation of the information exchange. And for each process, uh, you will have a use case diagrams, class diagrams, dependency tables, and sequence diagrams 
to understand every single detail of the data exchange process between the players. And moving next, uh, I will touch to the available data submission channels that uh, the platform offers, the transparency platform. Currently, there are four ways of uh, data submissions. Uh, these are uh, energy communication platform, web services, FTPS, uh, and FTPS, and uh, manual uh, uploads. Uh, among them, ECP uh, is the most commonly uh, used one by the data providers. And since uh, the same holds for the IX architecture, it's strongly recommended for you uh, to consider that option in your proposals. So uh, since the uh, ECP is the uh, promoted uh, option for data submissions, I will briefly mention uh, about the ECP and the, uh, the EQSP. Uh, indeed, uh, because the ECP is a, a component of the EQSP. And the EQSP is uh, NSOE Communication, Connectivity and Service. Uh, sorry, I think I lost uh, connection. Yes. <laughs> and when was it? I opened like, the slides again and I will... Uh, it was just a minute ago, actually, or even less. Okay, I can just start uh, from the data submission channels. I, I think you should share your screen. Ali. Yes, yes, I will. I'll share it now, sorry, for the interruption. Right on the next slide. On the next slide, okay. Okay, yeah. now I can, okay, I can provide some, uh, again, the same information here. Um, the ECP part is the most uh, commonly used one in the transparency platform, and it's a uh, part of a, uh, part of the EQSP, which is the NSOE communication and uh, connectivity service platform. And it has two components. Uh, in addition to ECP, we have also uh, EDX. And uh, since ECP is a very uh, commonly used one and the promoted one, I want to touch the uh, key functionalities uh, of it. And we can name uh, four key functionalities uh, of ECP here. And these are being secure, transparent, reliable, and uh, standard. And the, from the early developments of uh, the ECP component, uh, it went through many security tests. And uh, as a result of them, uh, it improved a lot. And since the secure data transfer without any leakage uh, or without any intervention is very important to us, uh, we are happy uh, that uh, we have the ECP uh, and we are ready to use it for that purposes. And uh, ECP is uh, in use for uh, a couple of years, more than uh, five years, I would say, uh, for the platform. So it's very re reliable uh, channel for uh, transparency platform. And uh, ECP also uh, brings the uh, transparency and reliability uh, in the solution itself because uh, each uh, step of the data exchange uh, process uh, includes an acknowledgement. So it's possible to trace the every detail uh, going on in the systems and uh, it uh, makes sure that um, none of the uh, submitted uh, data is lost within the network. And on top of ECP, uh, what uh, EDX offer uh, is, uh, it provides a larger file size of uh, transfers because there will, there is a limitation for ECP, ECP uh, being about uh, being 
50 megabytes of uh, file sizes and EDX solved this problem. And second useful functionality is uh, the publish and subscribe functionality. And uh, whenever uh, there is a message provided in the uh, system by a provider, the network uh, in the to, into the network, uh, information is distributed uh, to the subscribers of uh, that data immediately. And uh, finally, uh, to enable the possibility to work uh, with different standards, an integration channel uh, layer is also there uh, for possible new uh, protocols to be adapted to the uh, use of EcoSP. And uh, EcoSP is kind of a backbone of the communication layer uh, in the TSO world. And it's kind of a standard uh, used uh, between the TSOs. Therefore, uh, developing a know-how uh, on the EcoSP uh, can bring some additional benefits and business opportunities for the participants uh, in the energy industry in, in the future as well. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to touch again the importance of improving the market transparency uh, for flexibility markets. And I believe that we are all uh, on the same page, uh, that uh, there should be some uh, additional information to boost the transparency for flexibility markets. And in order to achieve it, uh, we encourage our participants to address the real needs of the markets by doing deep research and as, uh, analysis, facilitating events and webinars with the already existing players in the market and uh, elicitate the needs, uh, real needs of the trans uh, flexible markets from the transparency aspects. And uh, this is the list uh, here. I also, I already provided in the previous presentation. Uh, it's here to uh, provide you an idea and uh, guidance. Uh, we for sure we expect uh, more suggestions uh, to come from you uh, so that uh, we will uh, provide a very valuable information for the flexibility markets. Thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention. And now we can uh, move to the QA sessions. Let's Thank see. you, Ali, for your presentation. Let me see if there is any questions. Thank you. There is only the one. Yes. Uh, can we make a TP account freely and easily to try the more advanced TP channels uh, about that one? Yes. Uh, you can just uh, go to the transparency platform main page. And after clicking on login, you will see a, a registration link there. It's uh, completely free and the use of uh, all data channels is uh, also free. Uh, for some of them, uh, you need some additional uh, rights and you can just send your request uh, to transparency uh, at nsoe.eu and we will, uh, this is the help desk, I will uh, put it uh, to the chat so that you can uh, just address your request. Uh, to that email address and we will provide you the required rights to use RESTful API and subscription. For SFTP, there is no need for an additional right. You can, after creating your account, you can just connect to the SFTP server and, and download the available data there. Second question is, who are the Bulgarian SO representative in interface? Maybe we can talk to them about the extending data items research. Uh, yes, uh, because we encourage any kind of uh, studies uh, to identify the requirements of the flexibility markets from the uh, transparency aspects because currently there is no uh, regulation defined yet. So uh, I sh I'm sure that uh, people are looking for some information about uh, what's going on in the flexibility markets. We see some pilots and also some uh, 
commercial applications already uh, operating, but uh, unfortunately we don't have any data uh, publicly available on the transparency platform uh, for uh, that information. And because the transparency platform is uh, like steered by the regulations, so it's not uh, possible for us to decide uh, on what to publish there. So first is the, there needs to be a regularity framework to be constituted. Then afterwards, uh, we take the necessary actions to make it available and uh, make the uh, Constantinos, uh, you can uh, give information about the ESO representative, uh, maybe in that phase, maybe after the uh, application phase, so that uh, you can contribute to the already uh, ongoing work there. Yeah, okay, thank you, Ali. Yeah, actually, because the, the, this business case applies for a, a more general, let's say, uh, approach that doesn't stick to uh, the Bulgarian ESO part in particular. So probably after the um, uh, application phase, we could uh, elaborate such cases. Yes, exactly. This is a general mm -hmm. uh, case, and uh, we need to identify the items that will be common for all markets. Uh, and depending on the uh, geographical position, uh, in some places there might be some really specific uh, cases and specific products. Uh, yes, this can be also a part of the uh, transparency data. Uh, in the future, but we want to first focus on the more common ones that will help to all participants and that uh, applies uh, for the every flexibility markets available. Okay, so Ali, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, uh, we could probably continue with uh, the business use case proposal number three, aggregators and local energy communities, intelligence and services for congestion management. So which will be uh, presented by Lucio. Uh, yeah. Lucio, please. Yeah. Okay, you Lucio. should see the screen. Yes, not yet in a in a full screen mode. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it doesn't open in full screen mode. Wait, let me reshare the screen now. Uh, no. Still the same. Not in full screen mode. Let me close and reopen PowerPoint. Try from the first slide, probably. I don't know if this helps. Them. Maybe so. PowerPoint problem, yeah. Let me close and reopen PowerPoint. Okay. Just one second. Okay, now it goes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lucio. Please try to keep the 10 minutes if possible. So that definitely, definitely. Also, also less than 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, so this is the, the third uh, business use case that I'm presenting. It's called DSO and Consumer Alliance, uh, Aggregators and uh, Local Energy Communities, Intelligence Services for Congestion Management. So a brief overview on what we are doing in Italy, because this demo is uh, happening uh, Right now in Italy, uh, we have four different uh, flexibility service pro providers, in particular three aggregators, one for uh, electric vehicle charging stations, one for uh, electrical batteries, and one aggregator of end users, of final consumers. Then we have one large user, 
which is composed by uh, a CHP, some electric heaters, uh, office buildings, and a pumping station. So four different flexibility service providers with this list of different flexibility resources in the DSO network, which is there, the local DSO in the centralist part of Italy, in the municipality of Osimo. Charging station, electrical batteries, loads from final from end users, from final consumers, CHP plant, thermal storage and electric heaters, office buildings, and a pumping station. What happens? We have these four different uh, actors, flexibility service providers, for which uh, we want to have some intelligent services. In particular, uh, what can we provide from uh, these four, uh, these three aggregators and these large users, so these four uh, flexibility service provider? We can have historical and uh, also simulated data set of the renewable energy production and also all the consumption of different assets. Uh, we can have production and consumption of uh, consumer and prosumer profiles and all the different uh, profiles of the flexibility resources with all the with all their characteristics. So all the technical specification of the different resources and the chance to uh, communicate with the platform of the demo. So it's possible to download data or to uh, directly pick data through the use of APIs. What we want, given this set of inputs, uh, we want a tool which needs to be uh, written in Python, which is uh, enclosing algorithms uh, interacting uh, or implemented on the platform of the demo. In particular, this algorithm should perform a forecast of uh, consumption or production of the different assets of the flexibility service providers in order to perform an optimal planning. And so, an optimal strategy to activate the different flexibility resources. So we want to know uh, which is the flexibility that we can extract from the uh, different flexibility service provider and from the, all the resources of these providers, if they are batteries, if they are uh, renewable energy systems, if they are end users, we want to know how much energy we can uh, use from them and the optimal period. Uh, our software has a back-end front and front-end architecture, in particular the back-end is composed by uh, .NET Core and Python, it's a kind of microservices architecture, uh, while the front-end is in AngularJS. Applicants do not need to think about the front end because we will take care of correctly visualizing the data, but they need to act in the algorithmic point of view. So uh, we would like to have these algorithms on premise, but it can be possible also uh, to call APIs and have the result in our backend to be shown in the front end. In general, uh, this is the general overview of the requirements of this business use case. We have a different set of resources, which may belong to aggregators, to the local energy community of the end users, or to the large user. We can have all the specifications of the resources, we can have historical production, if we are talking about uh, renewable energy systems, uh, we can have uh, generation profiles and uh, 
usage of all the assets. This proposed toolbox uh, should give us a forecast with the day ahead scheduling of the flexibility resource and the optimal strategy to activate these flexibility resources from the aggregators in order to uh, deliver the, the optimal flexibility product. Basically, that's it. So I was quicker than you expected, Constantinos, right? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Lisbo, for this and for your presentation as well. We so have already... four questions. Yes, we already have one question uh, from Emilius. So, uh, local control layer. No, technically, the local control layer is uh, part of the existing tool. So, the way to uh, physically start the resources is already done. For uh, performance of FCR, uh, what is FCR? It should be a frequency containment reserve. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, uh, we still not implemented uh, FCR and FRR uh, algorithms. Okay, any other questions to Lucio? Okay, we'll, we'll have the, the, the chance to... Oh, okay, there's one more. In a solution that creates an API layer with the local control resources. Uh, well, actually, uh, not in the sense that uh, we don't want to, to perform an automatic uh, control of the resources from uh, our demo right now. Okay. Seems that we don't have any other questions for now. Oh, okay. There's still one more from Mr. Fanos. <laughs> no, don't worry. Uh, so, for what concerns the scheduling modules, actually, uh, there are the market constraints. So, basically, uh, we need to know the day ahead what we can offer. And then, during uh, the current day, we need to be sure that that amount of energy that we that we promised, let me use some easy words, uh, it's available 15 minutes before the actual commitment. So basically, the day ahead, we need to have the scheduling for a particular time slot of one or more hours. Ray forecasting, you mean, uh, for example, uh, <laughs> I stop. Uh, you mean, for example, uh, uh, the forecast uh, the day ahead and then a uh, detailed forecast uh, the current day. Uh, yes, this could be an option also because the ray forecasting should improve the quality of the day ahead forecast. Okay, uh, thank you, Lucio. In, in, in any case, we'll have some uh, uh, time left in the, the end after the presentation of all the business proposals. I thought any uh, questions in regard to all the business use cases and uh, uh, the process of application could be posed in the, in the very end. So for now, in the agenda, we have uh, actually scheduled a 10 minutes break. 
uh, if possibly we can make it even shorter, like nine minutes, so that we can be back at uh, uh, two o'clock uh, uh, CET. Um, so see you in a couple of minutes. I will write down in the chat box the time that we'll back, come back. Uh, thank you very much, Lucio, again for the presentation. Thank you. Bye.
Okay, so it's three o'clock sharply. I hope you have all enjoyed your uh, short coffee break. Uh, so now we will continue with the next uh, business use case proposal, uh, which refers to an advanced tech based to manage operate a local energy community, which will be presented by uh, Loyola and uh, uh, Carlos will be the one to make this presentation. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, Carlos. Hello. Hi, uh, let me share my screen. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, okay, can you can you see my screen now? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Carlos Avion. I'm with Loyola University working on, on mainly demonstrator 5.2. And our business opportunity proposed for work package number eight is an advanced tech base uh, to manage and operate a local energy community. So in order, oh, one second. Okay, so in order to cover, <coughs> in order to cover this presentation, we'll go through a brief introduction of what we're proposing with the call. Uh, will provide some information of what is it that we're deploying currently as part of demo 5.2 for intelligent distribution node. Set what a local energy community, we're conceiving a local energy community as, what the local energy community is expected to provide in terms of services and what are the expected outcomes that we hope to have from this call. So the call is basically for startups, for small and medium enterprises or mid caps that are interested in managing and, and optimally operating a local energy community, which will be equipped with photovoltaic power generation with uh, a large, a significantly large amount of battery-based energy storage and uh, an automatic control system, which will be a cloud-based control system that will be interoperated uh, via EXA platform. So for these participants should have a broad knowledge on, on what electricity markets are and how they work on energy systems and should be specialized on, on overall on IT technology. The whole call leverages the interface in Australia 5.2, as I mentioned, which is focused on the development of intelligent distribution nodes. So the select that candidate will inherit the resources and the automatic operational tools developed in our demonstrator in order to manage the local energy community. In addition, existing methods and operational tools that are currently developed for an intelligent distribution node might have to be adopted and extended to meet the needs of what a local energy community manager will have in order to provide cheaper energy to the end user and as well flexibility services to the operators, to the grid operators. So to give a context of what our demonstrator currently is, where it currently is, is um, we're uh, providing a significantly large amount of uh, battery energy storage to a building installed in, in a distribution system in Sofia, Bulgaria. So uh, this character, the best characteristics, the best will have a nominal power of 200 kVA and uh, energy capability, energy storage capabilities of, of more than 400 kilowatt hours, which when compared to the maximum demand of the building is significantly large because the peak of demand of the building is uh, close to 120 kilowatts. And in addition, the building count with the uh, solar rooftop PV and uh, that have an approximated uh, capacity of 41 kilowatts and some charging points for electrical vehicles that add up to 21 kilowatts. So this is in terms of, um, of uh, hardware that the, the, the intelligent distribution node has. But in addition, we're developing a, the whole control platform, which is cloud-based cloud control platform and counts with different modules. Uh, three specific modules, the ERMS, which is an energy resource management system, the grid service management system, and as well an information hub. So the selected candidate will be inheriting communication protocols and procedures that will 
enable the successful participation of what we're conceiving as, as an intelligent distribution node in both energy and, and services markets. We'll uh, as well inherit multi-objective optimization algorithms that will minimize cost of energy or and that will as well provide optimal bidding to um, flexibility service markets for both distribution system and, and transmission system operator. All this is done via EXA platform. And as well from our information hub module, it will inherit predictive and data analytic algorithms that we'll use for um, user consumption or market prices and other, and other things. So in here, uh, as we know, a local energy community has uh, several advantages. It enables democratization of renewable energies in urban environments. Um, it reduces costs for all the grouping different users on the, under one single entity. It contributes to an efficient and fully usable grid by providing flexibility services. And it, at the end of the day, what we're following, what we're aiming is to provide financial benefits to the member of such community. So um, what we have right now in the building in Sofia is, is uh, a building with different users that rent the spaces. In addition to being a prosumer, once provided with the battery energy storage system and the photovoltaic that already exists. So within the building itself, we already have what we could call a community. But in addition, we it, it is possible to reach out to other users that are um, electrically closed, uh, normally downstream the same transformer in terms of distribution system, and uh, transact energy with this with these consumers. So at the end of the day, the local energy community will act as an aggregator, uh, mon monitoring energy transactions between the different uh, participants, promoting uh, attractive tariffs for the participants of this uh, uh, local energy community, giving demand response or demand, demand response like services, providing them to the operators and uh, as well as attending the user preferences of its participants. So in our case, what are the services that we're uh, expecting this local energy community to provide? So as, as I mentioned, uh, the base of this is to um, benefit the, the users minimizing their electrical bill, but, but as an aggregator as well, this local energy community can explore new grid services with the different uh, operators. As I mentioned now from our demonstrator and via EXO, we are capable of, of providing congestion management to distribution system operator and balancing services to transmission system operator. In addition to uh, have as an aggregator the ability of accurately predicting demand from the participants and uh, we also expect it to, to uh, take into account user preference from different participants in the local energy community. So altogether, it, what we expect is to open new channels with the different consumers that are, that are connected within the building and in the surroundings. So this uh, um, local energy community will be a new gadget to the demonstrator that we're proposing. So it will be very tightly working with the energy resource management system, <clears throat> but also with the information information hub module that we we are developing, as the local energy community will be capable of making predictions of consumption and generation, but as the main objective will be to calculate uh, optimal schedules for the different um, assets that we have within the the intelligent distribution node for both uh, minimizing the energy cost and also working together with the grid service management system to provide flexibility services. So um, as an aggregator, the, the local energy community 
Well, in, in a nutshell, it's expected to involve the end users, to aggregate these end users by conducting advertising campaigns, by conducting personal contact so that it can set agreements and, and procedures with um, the consumers, but with the market operators as well, or with retail traders so that the local energy community can be integrated within the electricity market. Um, the idea is for this uh, manager of the local energy community to set new tariffs, new contracts, and new settlement mechanisms for the members of the local energy communities so that they can also participate in energy and service tradings by aggregation as well. And uh, as a last target would be to provide some regulatory guidance to the authorities to, so that the local energy community can be uh, constituted in Bulgaria. So that will be by my side. So thank you. If you have any question that I might help with, please feel free. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, seems that there aren't any questions for now. We can still address them in the in the very end of after the presentation for the business proposals. So moving to the next one, uh, which is the business proposal uh, entitled "Flexibility Service Providers, Including Aggregators with Demand Response and Distributed Energy Resources as a Grid Service uh, Provider." So, which will be presented by Dagmar Il from Ellering. Dagmar, the is yours. Thank you very much. One moment, please. We, we, before we could see your screen. Dagmar? Yes, uh, one moment. Yes, yes, no worries. Now we can see your screen, but not in the presentation mode. One moment. So, uh, hello everybody, uh, and sorry for a small uh, delay. My name is uh, Doug Maril. I'm a Finnish Baltic uh, team lead from Ellering uh, from Estonia, and I'm going to introduce uh, to you business use case uh, number five, and that is uh, Finnish Baltic uh, Single Flexibility Platform uh, demo. The vision of the demo is um, a flexibility platform that connects Estonian, Finnish and uh, Latvian electricity markets. And the aim is to involve consumption and uh, production based uh, flexibility. In the future, this platform can be used uh, through uh, Europe. In the TMO, uh, regional uh, TSOs and uh, TSOs, electricity and IT service companies, as well as R&T uh, parties are participating and also NCOE is included in the TMO. Pan-European architecture previously introduced and that this uh, interface product, interoperable pan-European grid service architecture, YEXA, is applied for Finnish Baltic uh, EMO. And uh, it consists of uh, four models, a flexibility register, 
a TSU TSU coordination platform and a single interface uh, to the market and the settlement unit. Here, Estonian, and Latvian Finnish pilot is the first uh, prototype for EXA, and piloting will be done in three countries. Focus here is on uh, distributed flexibility providers and independent aggregators. The architecture what was uh, previously uh, introduced is the same architecture that will be applied as a common architecture uh, for Europe. And uh, uh, the aim is uh, to link flexibility uh, service uh, providers with the common architecture and that those providers can offer uh, to existing and new electricity markets flexibility uh, products. Uh, the scope for interface is MFRR and uh, congestion management, but as well linking uh, existing markets with wholesale markets. FCR and AFRR will be introduced in the future, but the framework also should enable those products. In short, uh, the demo will uh, serve as said as a first prototype of a common architecture that connects market platforms linking wholesale retail balancing and new condition management markets. And we have three core aims to decrease barriers for flexibility service providers, to participate in flexibility markets, to increase coordination between TSOs and TSOs to enable higher participation of flexibility and to facilitate the competition between power exchanges. And uh, this business use case is addressed to uh, independent aggregators uh, and also uh, companies that want to develop the software that will allow to a trading company of electricity and energy or aggregation company to implement demand uh, response uh, programs and grid services. And the uh, piloting aims are related uh, to MFRR and uh, congestion management uh, products. New local products that are similar to the uh, standard conditions will be introduced in the uh, Finnish Baltic electricity uh, system. And additionally, uh, comparing to the standard conditions, uh, location of the uh, product activation on consumers and producers metering point level should be included along with actual up and down regulation power in an each metering point. And the expected outcome is uh, that the company acting in the role of a flexibility service provider is expected to connect to the API of the developed uh, IT systems and offer uh, their flexible resources to the pilotic market. And uh, this means that the uh, FSP would be required to be able to carry out an activation with a specified uh, flexible resource. And there is also an important note that the technical information can be provided uh, to interested participants, but access to APIs or relevant uh, infrastructures can be given before the contracts are in place. And uh, those flexibility resources, either demand side response generation or storage under the control of FSP uh, shall be uh, registered and qualified for providing MFRR and or congestion management uh, service. Uh, also, bids uh, should be made accordingly uh, with those qualified resources and at least five bids per week should be submitted uh, during the period of active demonstration. And uh, those bids can be activated by system operators uh, subject to uh, system needs and activated bids are uh, financially and balance settled by relevant system operators and FSP needs to follow relevant uh, national electricity market uh, rules.
and this is it from my side. Any questions? Thank you, Dagmar, for your presentation. There is, I see there is one uh, question, I guess it's for your business case. Okay, so uh, I can try to answer to this uh, question. I believe that more precise uh, interest uh, should be uh, described here, but uh, we currently are not able to uh, share more information and then it is already public, uh, but uh, technical information can be shared with market uh, participants according to their uh, business use cases. So this information that is already available about uh, EXA architecture that can be uh, shared as well as uh, other um, uh, technical information as uh, XMLs. Okay, there is one more question. So, uh, in the uh, case of a scope from a software uh, development company, the aim is uh, that uh, the software will enable to attract more flexibility service providers, uh, basically integrating uh, those flexibility uh, services uh, that can be used in uh, existing and uh, new electricity markets. So the scope here is attracting uh, flexibility service providers, uh, consumers and prosumers uh, that can uh, use uh, flexibility services. And in our case, those uh, services are MFRR and congestion management products. So yes, probably Dagmar, just to, to, to make it clear, I, I, I guess we, here we are seeking for FSPs themselves. So probably within their own premises, they have their own tools like uh, optimizers, forecasters, and so on and so forth. But now within this business problem where you are seeking for, um, uh, you're calling for uh, FSPs, right? Aggregators. Uh, yes, we are uh, calling uh, for FSPs, but uh... That also means that uh, those FSPs who intend to develop uh, their existing uh, software and uh, IT systems, and if uh, the business uh, use case uh, will attract uh, for more uh, flexibility from the market, then also such uh, software development uh, companies or proposals can be uh, qualified if we really see the benefit of attracting more flexibility uh, by this, but the core focus is on FSPs as uh, independent uh, aggregators, but uh, they may have some existing uh, uh, carriers uh, of their existing uh, technology. And in this case, either they can be uh, represented as an independent aggregator or a company can represent uh, them and their existing needs. Okay, very nice. Other questions for Dagmar? Okay, seems not, but still we can uh, come back again in the in the in the final session of open discussion to all the business use cases. Thank you very much, Dagmar, for your presentation. So we move on to the last uh, business proposal, which is uh, the development of an open access generic forecasting methodology for the determination of condition management requirements in power systems, uh, which uh, business proposal is uh, prepared by the uh, by our colleagues from UPRC. Uh, 
yet due to some unforeseen issues, they couldn't make it to join this meeting. So for this purpose, I will try to give you um, an overview of, uh, of their proposal. So let me share my screen. Can you see my screen in the full mode? Yes, you're good. Maria. So yes, it's a business proposal uh, is about on the development of an open access generic forecasting methodology for the determination of congestion management requirements in power systems, which is um, um, a business proposal uh, tightly connected with a, a task five, uh, 7.1 of uh, interface project which is uh, which actually um, integrates uh, three uh, regional uh, countries romania bulgaria and greece in order to implement a retail uh, to wholesale market approach for uh, distributed energy resources integration so essentially this business proposal acts uh, will have some outputs will be uh, basically fed uh, into um, uh, into this uh, demo for the integration of these three countries. So the outline of this presentation will uh, briefly discuss about the potential applicants, business case story, objectives, workflow, and the demo area. Um, so potential applicants to this uh, business proposal would refer to any academic institutions, uh, research institutes, or private companies with uh, deep understanding and proven expertise in power system analysis and modeling. Uh, of course, experience on uh, transmission and distribution networks, power flow studies, security and contingency analysis, uh, mathematical optimization, and software development. Uh, it is uh, important that uh, the applicants have expertise, proven expertise uh, with uh, research papers and scientific journals, um, conferences, or other technical reports. Uh, also, it would be desirable that any uh, potential applicants have expertise and uh, good knowledge on uh, demand response, integration of volatile uh, renewable energy sources into a grid. Uh, also, uh, desirable is the knowledge, extensive knowledge on, of the Greek power system and uh, as well as on the Romanian and Bulgarian power systems. Um, so uh, in regard to uh, the story, so uh, in transmission and uh, distribution networks, congestion typically occurs in cases where the networks cannot process all the transactions due to violations of operating limits. So congestion management essentially is um, a mechanism in order to prioritize uh, to prioritize the transactions to by keeping network operations within uh, their nominal limits. So any congestions in the branches uh, of the grid are mitigated. So the case story, uh, this case story uh, refers to the scheme where an aggregator uh, is an intermediate agent between the distribution system operator uh, owning uh, a number of portfolio with uh, multiple distributed energy resources. So the interaction between the aggregator and the operator includes flexibility offer and offers and requests. Um, the, the, the flexibility of uh, the generation units may contribute to the mitigation of uh, congestion to any congestions in the grid. So this business uh, uh, proposal essentially aims at quantifying uh, this, um, this flexibility for the, resolving, the resolution of uh, any congestions in the grid. So uh, in order to mitigate, uh, to, uh, to, to achieve uh, congestion management, there might be two different approaches, the cost-free congestion management, which aims at uh, uh, which doesn't have any, uh, doesn't imply any involvement of uh, uh, generators or uh, aggregators in general. Uh, and the mitigation of congestions take place either by modifying the topology of the grid, installment of new assets, uh, or by the operation of conventional uh, compensation devices, or the utilization of uh, flexibility AC transmission uh, systems. Uh, 
uh, yet in this uh, business proposal, um, we are exp we're exploring the non-cost-free congestion uh, management, which includes the generation rescheduling and curtailment of low transactions, and of course, um, and of course, the exploitation of flexibility by aggregators. So, the applicability of the, the developed uh, framework will be uh, uh, tested in the examined southern eastern European region, including the power systems of Romania, Bulgaria, and Greece. Uh, this business case aims at, uh, aims at uh, a thorough investigation of various transmission and distribution systems, uh, system benchmark topologies, in order to identify, as we said, uh, some generic indicators, which could be uh, afterwards utilized for the quantification of some hourly uh, operation congestion management requirements at both TSO and DSO levels. So, in this, uh, in this uh, demo, um, uh, our colleagues basically uh, treat the congestion management uh, service as a, an additional ancillary service, since it is not yet traded in the Greek balancing market. So in this case, uh, it will be treated as a typical MFRR service for the uh, according to qualification algorithms. Um, therefore, uh, within the concept of um, aggregator who acts as a uh, acts between the um, DSO and the several uh, distributed energy sources, who is responsible to uh, manage this uh, portfolio, there might be several DRs such as renewable energies, storage units, flexible loads, uh, eligible for price based demand response programs. And the um, flexibility of the generation uh, of these uh, generation units and on this portfolio will contribute to the resolution of uh, con congestion management. Um, so um, the aim of this business uh, case is to quantify the operational congestion management requirements at both TSO and DSO levels. So the expected outputs of this uh, uh, of this workflow is. A method to move a methodology development for the implementation of a power flow analysis based on the initial uh, day ahead energy schedule. Secondly, uh, an extensive scenario and test cases assessment for the identification of congestion management requirements. And finally, the provision of a final report, including the methodology part, representative results, and concluding remarks. In a nutshell, this um, business uh, proposal will be, as uh, I said earlier, will be integrated with the whole solution of uh, this demo. So we do see that the congestion management methodology will provide in outputs uh, uh, in the overall methodology in the uh, in the balancing uh, in the balancing algorithms. So if we do see the 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 general workflow in a, in a stepwise manner. Uh, initially, we have the forecast for the day ahead uh, market, the formulation and solution of the day ahead model. Then uh, these outputs uh, fed the, uh, the update forecast for uh, the balancing energy market to define the imbalances. And then we see that the, the outputs from this business proposal are fed to this algorithm in order to get the quantification of flexibility requirements for a congestion management based on the day ahead, uh, mod, uh, day ahead model solution. And then uh, all, this is, uh, all these are leveraged in order to have the final formulation solution of the uh, balancing energy uh, market model. Uh, as we'll see also later, um, there are uh, there will be used uh, several uh, uh, benchmark topologies uh, such as uh, topologies from the, the IEEE benchmark and then other required uh, data might be technical economic and operational data of uh, distributed energy resources such as fossil fuel uh, fire uh, generators photovoltaic units and uh, wind generators also hourly active and reactive demand over a 24 hour period in the various uh, buses of the transmission and distribution buses 
technical and operational data of transmission lines and buses such as thermal voltage and stability limits and others, as well as uh, meteorological data. All this will be necessary uh, in order to solve multiple power flow analysis by scenarios of uh, uh, various network topologies, including TSO and DSO models, uh, in particular test cases of uh, Romania, Bulgaria, and Greece. And, uh, such scenarios might be the placement of uh, generation storage units, um, capacity of generation storage units, price-based demand response objectives, such as strategic conversation and pick saving, uh, and possibly modeling of demand response via uh, price or demand uh, functions and price elasticity. Uh, as a matter of uh, determining, de de determining the um, identification of indexes for the congestion management uh, resolution. So the outputs will be the uh, generation units rescheduling and curtailment of load transaction in order to uh, resort to um, network statutes without uh, congestions. And uh, finally, um, it is essential to utilize these indexes uh, by the internal uh, integrated tool of the balancing energy uh, model. So here there are some typical uh, benchmark grids that are um, suggested to be used. Here we do see the Sigre benchmark grid, uh, which uh, has uh, um, multiple uh, buses. Uh, here there is another IEEE really benchmark of 118 uh, uh, nodes. Um, also, and one more uh, secure uh, benchmark grid. Uh, here is there is a the 33 bus uh, IEEE benchmark grid, which is also suggested to be used for the um, uh, assessment analysis. Um, again, the data requirements in order to run all these uh, potential scenarios uh, is to um, all these. Uh, uh, test benchmark grids, technical, economic, and operational data of DRs, hourly active and reactive demand over 24 hours, and technical operational data of transmission lines and buses, such as uh, their um, limits, and meteorological data for the assessment of uh, renewables uh, capacity. Also, recommending software for these. Um, or flow analysis are the power factory deep silent, the map power software, or the power system uh, analysis uh, toolbox. Here, there are some uh, screenshots from these uh, suggested tools. We, here we see a screenshot from the deep silent power factory uh, toolbox, one to, uh, screenshot from map power toolbox, and uh, one screenshot from um, the power system analysis um, toolbox. Uh, also, uh, technical da data uh, for the electrical grids might be found in this link as well. And finally, um, meteorology uh, might be uh, obtained by these two, uh, two sources. So that was it from my side. Uh, thank you for your attention. If there are further uh, if you have any questions that I could probably um, address, uh, please uh, note them in the chat box. Instead, uh, our interface colleagues, uh, Dr. Nicolas Kolzaklis and uh, Dr. Ioannis Palavakidis, uh, you can reach them out in order to address your questions. I think. There's only one question. Let me see if I can respond to this question. I see that it's for business use case three. Uh, are there any relevant questions to this um, business use case? Uh, instead, we could move forward to address any questions in regard to all the business use cases. Please, if possible, note uh, in the question in which uh, business use case you are referring to, 
so that we can address them. So this uh, question refers to uh, Lucio's uh, use case, I guess. Lucio? Yes. Uh, uh, yes, the project is providing uh, the data for both production and consumption. Uh, once the project analysis, is there an obligation of keeping the solution, the solution running? Yes, uh, the solution should be uh, should be running. That's why I told uh, that on premise uh, should be nice because once we have uh, the solution in our demo, uh, we would like to to run this solution also also after the the, the project end. But. Oh, of course, uh, this is. Uh... Uh, if I may jump in, uh, Lucio, and thank you for your uh, responses. Uh, officially, uh, this is, let's say, optional, meaning that yeah, uh, exactly. uh, the, the business, let's say, uh, case that is, uh, let's say, that lies beneath uh, uh, any collaboration with uh, a, a, an application, with a, a, an organization that uh, becomes part of the interface ecosystem. It's, this is something that, uh, let's say, is uh, going to be in a subject for further discussions. However, officially and uh, according, of course, to the what the model and the, the contract model will include, uh, the, the experiment, let's say, uh, also finishes together with the project. So there is no obligation uh, to keep the solution running. Of course, as I said, this is something that uh, the involved parties will need to define. If we find, the, let's say, a business case there, then this is something that uh, we would like to discuss this with you and we will see how we can uh, continue after the, uh, the official uh, uh, duration, let's say, of the project. Perfect. So one more question, general question. I, I noticed that there is one more general question. Uh, so according to the eligibility criteria and what has been clearly defined also in the guidelines and the portal itself, and also, I don't know, Costadinos, it would be nice if we could also, uh, Maria, if we could now, uh, until we close, if we could see the this slide where the li different links to the portal and for the questions and all this uh, is available. So uh, this general question, and uh, as I was saying, uh, we are only uh, encouraging, let's say, and uh, ac expecting single team uh, proposals. So proposals coming from one entity and not, not from a consortium of partners. And I think that uh, for the testing of the solution, uh, I'm afraid that this is a, an anonymous, uh, let's say, query. However, I understand that this follows the business use case three question. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe, maybe it's for me. Uh, yes, the project will give the validation environment. So basically, for the forecast purpose, uh, you will continue to, to acquire uh, data in order to to validate uh, forecast algorithms uh, for what concerned the uh, scheduling uh, yes there will be stakeholders uh, of astea the owner of most of the resources which will be involved in the in the validation part Other questions to uh, on the business uh, proposals?
Maria, do you want to make a, a recap on these uh, questions that uh, Mr. Fanos is posing regarding the work plan and development and implementation? Okay, yes. Uh, the implementation period cannot exceed six months. Uh, the dates, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the beneficiaries can start by December 2021 and together with the experts, they can uh, implement their work. So I lost the previous uh, question. The work plan uh, question is uh, referring to the same one, I suppose. Yes, and uh, for the development, implementation and testing time, there is uh, there is no, let's say, specific uh, uh, duration for each of the, the three phases. Uh, it depends on the on the on the project on the experiment that will be described. Uh, so by implementation, uh, so first of all, development means uh, uh, that we that. Uh, so there is a question regarding, uh, let's say, the definition, let's say, sort of the content of the development of the implementation and of the testing phase. So very, uh, in general terms, we can say that development includes the, the concrete, let's say, the, the detailed design phase where the, the experiment, the applicants, the successful applicants describe in more detail uh, they are experiment, they are uh, vision, they provide uh, the blueprints and the way that this, uh, their system, their application will be developed. Implementation includes mainly, uh, if I may say in quotes, the integration of this uh, new application coming from uh, the experiment to the uh, EXA or to the different business use cases uh, context. So meaning that uh, your application, if for example, you address an application for the transparency platform of NSOE. So first of all, you have to design it to develop this application, this service, and then try to integrate it with the existing infrastructure. So this is more or less the implementation. And the testing is the phase where we will create some scenarios and we will try to to test uh, that the, the application is actually performing as expected, that it uh, actually meets the initial expectations and uh, from a technical perspective, but also from a, an operational perspective. Uh, and so I, so I hope that this is uh, clear enough for the, the content of the different phases. And there is one more question. Uh, for example, can we say that we will spend from December to X, uh, from one day to another, developing the platform? Yes. Oh, yes. I, yes. You, uh, in the in your proposals, the ones that you are, you are going to officially submit to, to us, you should uh, provide also the timeline of your experiment, let's say, of your project, meaning that yes indeed uh, there is let's say a section that is referring to the work plan of your uh, project let's say your experiment and in this work plan we expect to see also uh, the duration of its of the phases uh, so definitely yes so you can call it month one to month six the whole project and you can say that from for example from month one to month two we will design this for month three to month four. We will uh, try to integrate and so on and so forth. Uh, and indeed, uh, yes, uh, these uh, experiments should be uh, designed in a way that uh, all these phases from the, let's say, detailed design up to uh, the final, let's say, validation and evaluation, uh, all this should happen within uh, six months. Indeed. OK. 
Okay, thank you. So until we receive any further question, uh, here is the, the site again. You can contact us from here. We, during the meeting, we checked the uh, help desk. It seems that it works. Uh, however, if you still have any issue, uh, you can send us uh, an email uh, to our personal ones, uh, either mine. Uh, I do not have my personal email on this side, but uh, I can share it again uh, on the on the chat. Uh, so, uh, what else? Any news or, or events, you can find it here. If you are registered users, uh, once we have something uh, new, uh, you will uh, receive an email uh, directly as uh, it happened with the third webinar uh, for those that were already registered and uh, all the documentation dates and materials and the frequently asked questions are uh, on the resources page uh, some uh, the new questions uh, have uh, an end uh, parenthesis new uh, if you are familiar with the site and here is the six business cases if you want to uh, advise them again uh, apart from the guide for applicants it's the same uh, information uploaded the guide for applicants is the uh, official documentation and uh, i don't know if we have any more questions we do not have yet Apparently, we don't have any more questions. Just let's wait for a couple of more minutes. Just to just to repeat, uh, we apologize for this uh, inconvenience with the email. We have already checked uh, that the list server is uh, actually in. Uh, it's actually active and it works properly. Probably there was some uh, non-delivery uh, error for some particular email. So, uh, if you uh, keep having the same issue and you are receiving the non-delivery uh report please uh, directly forward uh, the email to, to our personal emails uh, maria if you want to uh, write again in the chat box your email or you can also add my yeah. email as well. write it again please if, if it's possible. I'm sorry. this is the, the open call uh, email and this is our this is mine uh, on the on the recording of the videos, uh, there are our personal emails on the slides. You can also find them there if you miss them. Mm -hmm. Also, this this uh, the today's meeting is uh, recorded in order to uh, share it also uh, in our uh, network. So you can also recast the previous um, the previous uh, recordings and. Uh, uh, see them again uh, so you can have a look on the on the presentations again so we have already uploaded the previous uh, two webinars oh, maria is already showing on the on her screen the previous webinars which are basically posted in uh, in our portal so you can uh, have a look on the descriptions and the discussion that uh, took place in the first two webinars meanwhile Load the new one uh, later this week. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, I don't see any other questions. Okay. Uh, Maria, do you want to complement something else about the uh, dates and so on? Uh, I, I think uh, the, the deadline is the most yes. crucial mm -hmm. now. You have one month to uh, 
uh, left to, to submit your proposal, please uh, do not uh, wait until the last minute to not have any failures uh, because of the system. And uh, for any question, do not hesitate to contact us. We will be happy to answer. Okay, nice. Nice. Maria, we don't have any other questions, so probably we can uh, conclude this webinar as well. Thank you so, all for participating on my behalf. From our side, I would like to thank also all the panelists that uh, uh, gave the presentation of uh, their defined business proposals. Thank, thank you very much to all the panelists. Also, would like to thank all the attendees for their expressed interest on the uh, interface um, uh, on the interfaces uh, open call and also for attending this um, uh, this webinar uh, and also for their uh, interest to have this discussion so thank you all very much for uh, your participation and interest so wish you, you a pleasant evening thank you have a nice afternoon thank you thank you bye bye, -bye.